I'll, I'll be clicking on actions, then on the execution. And you can see that on the artifacts part, I have the Cypress execution report over here. This is, uh, well, giving me the report that I get from the execution is that here we have an automatic game masters. As you saw in the videos preview, I want to explain you, right? Um, how you can create that uh, GitHub actions workflow where you're going to have a final artifact automatically generated. In this particular case, it's going to be a mocha and reporter HTML file, right? With your test execution uh, results and also how you can send automatically and a Slack notification as soon as the build is done, right? So you, you can access just clicking on the click and all your team is going to be notified. Okay. Uh, I'll, I'll be doing this step by step. As you can see in my GitHub repository is totally empty. Here you can see a Slack over here with a GitHub actions channel over here that I'll be using for, for this demo. Okay. And also you can see that I have the Visual Studio code open, which is the ID that I'll be using and it is totally empty. Okay. I'll be installing a uh, Cypress from scratch, um, using JavaScript. I just wanted to tell you that if you want to, um, if you want to access a full course about Cypress 10 using TypeScript, at least the very basics, you can come here to this Udemy course. Uh, I, I am, I have created a, uh, a course where we explore uh, the installation process using TypeScript and um, how you can find elements by CSS and XPath and a lot of scenarios, API testing, Cypress dashboard and GitHub actions with parallel execution, which is another amazing thing. And here we have another uh, advanced scenarios that you can take a look. Okay, guys. Okay, masters, as you can see, I have a uh, like the demo the structure right for the framework using Cypress and well you can see that I have like the github folder where we're gonna have the workflows uh, that I can use right you can see that I have an, an only a demo that jaml file inside with uh, the standard structure that we have in the official documentation over here right I actually copy this and just modify some things uh, that I, I want to explain you in a few seconds okay also you can see that in my Cypress folder well under end-to-end -end and one getting it started I have one particular JS file which is the well the test that is automatically generated by Cypress as soon as we install this the framework right we have seen this before just look for it install Cypress 10, Jog Media, and you're gonna find it, okay? And also, um, let me show you this. I have created a script in my package.json named UI regression, which is the one that I'll be using, okay? You can see that it is going to be trigger triggering a simple Cypress run using the browser Chrome, and I'll be specifying that I want to execute the script that I just mentioned before, right? the only script under one getting started folder. So you can perfectly run this particular command, npm run, the name of the, of the script, which is this, in this case is UI regression, right? And you're gonna notice that this is gonna uh, execute uh, that particular test, okay? And then at, at, at when it is done, we're gonna have a final report just like this one. Well, it is, it is in progress, so just wait for a few seconds, okay? And you're going to see that, um, I'm sorry, the reports. Now we're going to have an HTML report with the final result. Okay. Also, if you want to learn how to integrate the Cypress Mocha Ocean Reporter in your framework, you have a video with all the guidance that you need in YouTube, right? You can look for Young Media, a Cypress 10 Mocha Ocean Reporter, and it is going to be there. And if you want to know how to integrate it with TypeScript in the Udemy course that I just told you before, it is there explained step by step, okay? Okay, now that I have uh, the, the, the results over here, right? I can tell you that um, the, the structure that I'll be having in the workflows file, right? because I want to explain you step by step how you can achieve this integration. Okay, let's do it. Okay, masters, the next step that I want to do here with you guys is to explain you what is going to happen in our workflow file that we need to configure to trigger our GitHub actions. Okay, you're going to notice that, um, well, I only have one job here, right? And the name is going to be Cypress test. That's the name. That's the name of the whole workflow inside of the workflow it is going to be triggered as soon as it detects a push, right? Action by Git. And then you can see that I only have one job. Of course, I can divide these steps in different jobs, but I decided to have it in this way. Okay. And you can see that this Cypress uh, run job is going to be run or it is going to run on 
Ubuntu latest, right? And inside of the, on this particular run, we're gonna have a lot of steps, okay? I'm gonna just collapse the steps to explain step by step what is going to happen, okay? Um, let me, well, let, let's do it. The first step is going to be the use the GitHub action checkout. So uh, we can, well, kind of clone the repository in, in the GitHub uh, workspace. You can notice this in the official documentation here, right? Which is going to be uh, that this action checks out your repository under the GitHub workspace, okay? That's it. Uh, if I go back to the next step, it's going to be a Cypress run using the GitHub action provided by Cypress.io, right? If we check the official documentation here, it is going to be um, telling us that GitHub action for running Cypress end to end tests includes a NPM installation, custom caching, and a lot of configuration options. Okay, that's great. And then we have the upload artifact action, which is the one that we're, we're going to be using, right? To um, well, expose or um, upload the final HTML report. Here, here we have a lot of interesting configurations that we have to do. So let me explain you what is going to happen here inside. Uh, well, the name is going to be uploading artifact, right? And it is going to be using the upload artifact uh, action, which is this one over here that I have over here, which is this. This uploads artifacts from your workflow, allowing you to share data between jobs and store data once a workflow is completed. We're going to be using this for the second purpose right and that's it you're gonna need you're gonna see that uh, i have a configuration uh, step over here telling me that if i always want to upload that artifact and i want to do it and then you can see that also i'm using the width command right to specify the name of the final artifact i am specifying where my html file is gonna be uh, located as you can see in the in our local execution it is under cypress report and html right okay and it is asking me for the retention days let's imagine that i want to have it for 30 days and that's the thing that i want to do okay and then we have this particular um well github action which is this one let me just look for it because i want to explain you what is going to happen inside okay Doo -doo -doo. there it is okay okay this uh, github action is going to help us to well send a notification to slack like this one over here. Um, well, as soon as the build is done with the well, direct link for the GitHub action, all right? So let me explain you uh, what is inside of this configuration, okay? Uh, it is asking me, or it is asking, we're gonna be setting the name, which is gonna be a Slack notification. Uh, it is gonna use that particular action that I just showed you before, uh, a GitHub action to send a message to a Slack channel, okay? and. Here I can define or set up some environment variables. Uh, for example, the this is a requirement. I'm gonna explain you in a few seconds how to uh, declare a secret and what is this. Okay, it is asking me for the Slack username. Uh, you can set uh, any username. Don't worry about it. It doesn't have to be the, the same that you have in Slack. You can send just a single string and that's it. Uh, the Slack title, uh, you can well place the title that you need. Uh, also a message here, right? And also the Slack color depends and it's gonna depend on um, if it passes or not, okay? Okay, now that we have this YAML file, I need to do some extra configurations uh, to get the Slack um, action or the yeah the, the slack notify action working correctly so okay guys it is not that complicated to be honest okay uh, here we have like the instructions to do it so uh, i think that this is going to be pretty easy okay so uh, you can access this uh, link that i'll be leaving you in the description for sure all this documentation is going to be for you there because this is the well all the original um well f uh, well resources and you can come and check more information for sure. That's a recommendation. I'm just giving you a demo, okay? And okay, I'll be uh, clicking on this, which is uh, telling me you can get get or generate an Slack incoming web hub, webhook token from here. So I'm gonna click on this, okay? And here I can create a new incoming webhook, okay? It is gonna ask me uh, for some information. Let me show you this. I'm gonna click on add to a Slack, okay? And it is asking me for which channel, uh, what is the channel that I want to use? If you remember, I wanted to use the GitHub, GitHub Actions channel, right? So I'll be using that. That's it. Um, it is giving me the webhook 
URL. This is the one that I need. Okay, I'm gonna copy it right here, and then I'll be saving the settings just to, uh, well, I have this webhook configured correctly. Okay. Now I have to go back to GitHub, right over here. Let me look for that to do my repo, and I have to click on settings, right? Look for um, no, it is not webhooks. It has to be secrets, okay? And I have to click on actions. Then I'll need to create a new repository secret. The secret is going to be that particular um, well, uh, incoming webhook that you need, right? And the key has to be the one that. Here we have in the official documentation Slack webhook. That's great. Um, then we go back to the original repository and here we have the name of that particular secret, okay? What is happening with this secret? It is basically uh, the secret that I'm sending in our workflow over here in the line uh, 27 Slack webhook. And as you can see, I'm just uh, telling the workflow that it has to use the secret Slack webhook, which is the one that I defined here. Okay, that's great. And let me see if I have to do something else, but I don't think so. I think that that's basically it. Um, let me see. Da, da. Yeah, if you want to uh, check, for example, other um, configurations, you can come here, change the Slack color, uh, link names, Slack message, Slack title, and so on. You have a lot of options here. And here you have more information that you can use for customize your own um, message. Okay, but I think that that's it. Um, I'll be committing these new changes just to make sure that um, what is happening here, why? Yeah, there it is. Um, okay, I can use the one zero, okay? I'll be committing to main, right? And I'll be pushing the changes. Let's see if the workflow is automatically uh, well, triggered, right? You can see that this is over here. The last commit that I sent was a simple update package.json, the default name that was provided by GitHub. Uh, desktop and if I access here you're gonna see that uh, inside of the execution part here we have all the steps right uh, uh, I'm sorry let me see all the steps and all the names right here we have the checkout at the beginning right uh, the checkout is is done then here we have the Cypress run which is this part and it's gonna be running the script that I defined okay and then we have the uploading um, artifact okay then we have the Slack notification over here and the post checkout that is automatically automatically done by GitHub Actions. Okay. You can see that the, the script is running inside. Okay. The Mocausum report is automatically generated. And as soon as it is done, the well, the upload artifact is done as well. And then the Slack notification is sent. Okay. If I go back to um well the Cypress run job. And to be honest, I'll, I'll be clicking on actions, then on the execution. And you can see that on the artifacts part, I have the Cypress execution report over here. It is going to download the zip file, okay? And I can access the uh, WinRAR. In my case, this is the software that I be, I'll be using to uh, check what is inside of my zip file, right? You can see that this is, uh, well, giving me the report that I get from the execution, right? Uh, in my GitHub action. Um, well, yeah, in the GitHub action execution itself, okay? Uh, another thing that I want to show you is that here we have an automatic uh, notification, right, that we received in Slack with the event that happened, the commit uh, message, the action that is going to be redirecting me or it is going to redirect me to this particular Cypress run, right? That's amazing. And uh, that's it. Here we have the customized message that I send in my in my environment variable message, right? And that's it. Okay, guys. I just wanted to tell you that. Thank you very much for all your time. Thank you very much for watching until the end. Please subscribe, hit the like button, and let me know if you need any kind of help. I'll try to respond as soon as possible in the messages in this YouTube video. Okay. Thank you very much, guys. See you soon. Bye bye.